time. Next, a little semi swing. Okay. I know there's probably like genuine business constraints. I also feel like 7 Eleven in North America sucks because we don't think that we deserve nice things. Like, if you're like, the food at 7 Eleven sucks, they're like, of course it sucks. It's a gas station. It's 7 Eleven. What do you expect? Then you're like, oh, but it's kind of like half decent in Japan. They're like, well, 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 um, well, well. Oh! <laughs> I worked at 7 Eleven for two years. One time, our night shift guy stole the front door. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> can you imagine showing up at the at the pawn shop with the Seven Eleven front door? <laughs> oh man! That would go crazy on your house, though. Did you read about the woman who had her driveway stolen? I did not read about How does that happen? I thought it was bad enough that like once a year on r slash Vancouver, someone will post CCTV footage of someone stealing like a tree from their front yard. Not like a big tree, like a like a juvenile tree. <laughs> Shit in Detroit. Oh man. My friends and I have stolen tons of spare street signs and mounted them to our walls. The problem is, um I think if like a police officer ever finds out about that, you might actually get charged with a felony. Like, I got no problem with it. But I think, like, if, if a cop ever sees inside of your house, you may go to prison. Plus, it's ugly decor. Yeah, unless... Uh, unless, like, you're named one of the streets. Like, if your name is, like, Main or something like that, and you're like, check it out, it's Main Street. Bro, my brother stole hundreds of vinyl records from Walmart. That shit's not even... I mean, that's just illegal. I don't know... I guess you're bringing it up because it's illegal, but that's just stealing. Which is fine, I guess, but... <laughs> That's thousands of dollars? Yeah, but it's Walmart vinyl. Like, they were probably gonna end up smashing this shit behind the store anyway. Have you ever shoplifted NL? Not on purpose. Uh, but there have definitely been times where, like, I've paid for my groceries and then realized like, not even a self-checkout, like, normie checkout. Realize, like, I forgot to load tortillas onto the conveyor belt or something like that, but I've already loaded all the groceries back in my car. And I just feel like you could consider this a moral failing if you want. My ass is not walking back into the grocery store with tortillas and going, like, hey, just so you know, I've, I'm sorry, I forgot to pay for these tortillas. Like, can you ring me up? I'm more like... If they didn't notice, then fucking <laughs> no harm, no foul. <laughs> I kind of consider like it comes out in the wash, too. I'm sure I've been like, I don't rigorously look at the scanner and the receipt. So I'm sure I've been like double scanned for shit in the past and paid twice as much for something. 
I, I, I consider it like it's a, it's a take an item, leave an item type situation. The cashier at Home Depot didn't scan a new Dremel I was buying. Honestly, I love that for you. My mom was also telling me she buys these protein bars, and usually the protein bars are like $4 each. She went to Shoppers Drug Mart, and they were selling them two for $5. So already, that's like a, a huge savings, right? But then, on the protein bars, they had a sticker that said $2 off. So I know what you're thinking. Two for three dollars, pretty sick deal. But my mom was like, no, 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 no. They're already two for five dollars, and then each one of them should be two dollars off, which should make them 50 cents each. So she like took a case of them up to the cashier, and the cashier was like, I gotta talk to our manager. <laughs> and then the manager like was like, that's not the spirit of the promotion. And she was like, that's fine. I'm not going to come back. I just want the case. And then they gave her the case at the price that she negotiated. <laughs> Which is fucking sick, man. I lost the sauce. Mm, you're not acting in the, in the spirit of the promotion. So true. Sorry, I'm sure Shoppers Drug Mart will be fine. Imagine having to barter for your groceries. Yeah, I don't know. We're kind of slipping back into some kind of like joke country status. You see the article about the dude who had a stroke while he was driving and the 911 dispatcher was like, just drive to the hospital forehead. So he drove to the hospital and then when he got there, he didn't get treated for nine fucking hours. Are you kidding me, man? The dude had a damn stroke. How could you make a wait for nine hours at the hospital? There was nine hours of more urgent shit in front of that dude. Oh, he didn't advocate for himself in the waiting room. I saw, like, because uh, this was on r slash Vancouver, people in the comments were like, to be fair, you don't see all the times that people go to the hospital with a stroke and are seen fast. Because <laughs> that's the way the fucking shit's supposed to work, idiot. I'm not going to write an article. 94% of people who have strokes are seen quickly at the hospital. That's a fucking weird article, man. That's literally, like, it reeks of propaganda. Let go, let go, go up, okay. And hold. Semi swing, 2 p.m. It's like a heave and a hoe, going low, jumping high. Heave, ho, low to high. Heave, ho, low to high. Heave, ho. I didn't, I lost confidence. Heave, ho, low to high. <laughs> How many days has this been now? Less than one?
It happens. Hold rock, low right, two hands, and just fucking send it. I do have to admit to having a penchant for just fucking send it, because that's like easy advice to follow, and it sounds like it should work. <clears throat> Go back to having confidence. I am going to make this jump. That was better. I am going to make this jump. <laughs> How far into the game are you? Apparently there's like two more pools after this one. Oh. Okay, okay. Hey, Anel, are you a star rating for games guy? Or an out of 10? Uh, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you. I guess I'm an out of 10. I tend to default to out of 10. But I'm also kind of a believer that the, the scale of gaming is almost actually... I don't believe this for movies, but I believe it for games. That it's a Boolean scale. It's like a true or false. Should you or should you not play this? And a difficult game about climbing, you should play it. Like, I, I think at the end of the day, when it comes to games, like, it's either, like, worth your time or it isn't, right? So the thing is, like, I think if I was, if I played a 30-hour-long game that was inoffensive but kind of boring, I would be like, well, it's like a 6 or a 7 out of 10. But if you ask me, like, should you play it? I would be like, no, you should find something better to do with your time, even if it's just playing, like, a better game. Oh. Huge, huge. You grab. You grab. <clears throat> this stream, this game is literally designed so streamers can talk to their chat while disguised as playing a game. Nope, uh, actually, it's a it's a game. It's a you you play it using a controller or your keyboard and mouse. There's mechanics you interface with to allow you to make changes to the environment. It's a, it's a game. Oh, but there's no there's no magical spells in it. It's a game. It's a game where you climb a mountain. I don't know what you want me to say. We don't do that here. But they don't even have 17 junior quest designers working on it. Let go of the space bar. Hold. Two hands just fucking send it. Uh, you are a saboteur. <laughs> I have to not use two hands. Unless you can compel me to use two hands. Because many times people have been like, this is a two hand jump. And I've never had a two-hander actually manifest in the game. 
the one hand has always been the way for me. Maybe, maybe it's like a tennis thing. You're, you can be a one-handed or a two-handed guy. I'm a, I'm a one-handed backhand sort of guy. Improves your slice. Hold bottom right. One-handed baby swing heave ho. Baby swing. All right, for those of you demanding some respite, we'll play something else at two. I don't know what it or not two. Sorry, noon. I don't know what it'll be yet, but we'll we'll figure it out. I know many things that it won't be, though. Because we've discussed them over the stream thus far. Hey, and our thoughts on the impending AAA game crash? I just, like... I care about, like, the people in the industry, but I don't care about the games at all. It's just the, it's just the honest truth of it. It's, I'm kind of disillusioned with it. I, I don't think it's just the industry. I think it's also, like, age. Like, all these fucking gorgeous, like, 4 out of 10 games keep coming out. And everyone's like, this isn't what we want. And then they're like, check out how photorealistic this new game is. And people are like, oh, fuck! Like, I think the... I, I feel like AAA gaming is just in a, in a place where like most and it i guess it's been like this for a while but i'm not interested in in essentially any triple a game that's that's come out or is coming out like the it seems like well, okay, from software, I'll give you that. But it seems like those games should be able to take the biggest swings because they have the most resources. But what inevitably ends up happening is they have to please shareholders, so they have to make something that has like all the edges rounded off so that it doesn't give anybody... Like, instead of giving people like reasons to buy it, you have to tick the boxes that make it so people don't find a reason not to buy it. I always think back... To like Titanfall 1. I know Titanfall 2 is the one that people like, you know, keep a light on for, but it, for me, part of this started in Titanfall 1, where like it had amazing multiplayer and it didn't have a single player campaign. And people were like, well, I'm not gonna fucking buy it if it doesn't have a single player campaign. It's missing one of the features that I would normally consider necessary for like a $50 game. And I'm like, but the multiplayer is, it's like the best multiplayer that's come out in five years. Like that in and of itself is worth more than, than $50 to me. We're like, well, I'm sorry. They gave me a convenient reason not to buy it. Then Titanfall 2 came out and the campaign was amazing. But people were like, I didn't play the first one. So I'm going to fucking, <laughs> I'm going to skip this one until it's $1.99 on Origin. And then I'm going to be like, they need to make a sequel. I paid $1.99 for it. Baby swing and, a, and ascent. Okay, okay. Closer? Really? So I was just reading the tech. Hmm. <clears throat> I also feel like, um, I don't know, this is more of like a social media thing, but like the appetite that he, people have for like talking about games that they will never play just is annoying to me. Like they will spend 40 hours getting into like internet arguments about a game that they 100% like will not play when it comes out. And I'm like, what are we doing here, lads? 
This just doesn't make sense to me. But then you see the impulse rear its ugly head, like, at all times. Even when a 10 out of 10 game comes out, people are like, yeah, playing it is, like, pretty fun. But you know what's even more fun is, like, getting into needless hypothetical discussions. If you could only buy one game, would it be FTL or would it be Balatro? Fucking, I don't know, if you could only watch one movie, would it be The Godfather Part 2 or fucking The Shawshank Redemption? I don't know, what, make more time in your life and watch two movies. We don't need to get into the, like, this, there's a surplus of, of value here. We should be like, oh my god, thank you so much for the surplus. Indie game's still crushing it, though. Hold. 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 King. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking on that one. <laughs> oh man. What was that? I I lost the plot on that one. You gotta get as far right on the rock as possible. Okay, thank you, thank you. And again, this is not being just needlessly contrarian, but like, I genuinely don't give like a shit about an increase in graphical fidelity. Hold, hold, at all. Like, everybody has their, their line. A game would probably have to be like a 15 out of 10 to get me to pog up over ASCII art. But, like, in terms of, like, you know, oh, this guy's face looks photorealistic, I really don't give a shit. Like, I, you know, the, the criticism for me that, that always seems like it, it's only made by, like, 12-year-old kids, I'm sorry to resort to an ad hominem, is when people are like, I like good graphics because it increases my immersion. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, motherfucker, you are not immersed. You are sitting at a desk looking at a monitor, your cat's, you know, scratching your leg to get some attention, you're hungry, you got a fart, like, you got, you are a real person that is playing with a toy. So, like, the, oh, I don't like when I see this in my video game, it really makes me feel like I'm not actually a luchador in 1910 Mexico. Well, you fucking aren't, bitch! Let's, let's go from there. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything, man. Okay, sorry, I have to get... Hold. You just sound grumpy? I'm actually like one of the most positive gamers out there, which is crazy. Everybody else is like, I love gaming so much. Oh yeah, really? How do you spend your time? Arguing about how shit it is? <laughs> telling, telling someone enjoying a game that what they're playing isn't actually a game. It's just streamer bait. Getting really, really jaded about stuff that's already out and pinning all of my hopes and dreams on the sequel that comes out next year. When the sequel comes out, giving it a negative review on Steam because it has DRM. Didn't you just have a rant about Stardew Valley? Yes, but I'm the only honest gamer. Stardew Valley is a great game, I just hate it. That's just my, like, you're, you're allowed to have a few of those. You're allowed to have a few media properties that's like, you know, I fucking get that this thing is good, but I hated it. As long as you don't say it about everything, then we, we let you have them. Dan and Hades. It bothers me, but in order to stay intellectually consistent, I will say yes. But I really don't understand Dan's hatred for Hades, because it's, it's so good. <laughs> Ooh.
it's fine to say I don't like it. It's not fine to say it's bad. Yeah, but like when I say I don't like it, you know what I'm saying. I'm saying it's bad. I don't really care. If you hear me say it's bad and you're like actually like you should say I don't like it, like you can do the translation in your head. It's fine. Last game you played that you didn't like? That's a good question. I mean, I, I really did not like Armored Core 6. I think usually I do a pretty good job of knowing whether or not I'm going to like a game before I choose to play it, but Armored Core 6, I definitely like, you know, by the time I got a third of the way into it, I was like, I'm not sure I like this at all. You didn't like Rogue Legacy 2? That's... I mean, I... That... That's fair. That's fair. What? I had so much momentum, bro. Why? I don't know. It wasn't... It wasn't releasing dopamine when I played it. Why do you hate all new games? Not true in the slightest. I like a difficult game about climbing. I like Balatro. I've been championship or championing Balatro for a long time. People are saying I don't like Dragon's Dogma 2. Of course I don't like it. I haven't fucking played it. How would I know? Hold. I'm going to bat for a difficult game about climbing, bro. This is a good game. And you have preconceived biases about what is and isn't a real game that are that are coloring your ability to, to judge it. Would you play this off camera? I don't play shit off camera. So I play with my kid off camera. That's it. It's not a. The question is not germane to the conversation. It's a victim of circumstance, you know. If you were 12 years old and this came out on GameRabbit.com. You would still be posting about it as a 35-year-old. You would be like, remember a difficult game about climbing? That was classic in the middle school classroom. But instead, you're 35 and it came out on Steam, and you're like, it doesn't even have a sword in it. Like, you know, we have to grow past this. We have to expand our horizons so we can enjoy different things. Hold. Hold. Hello. <laughs> it looks like you're making methane drug. Because yeah. I'm bald? No. Because you got five empty cold brew with the <clears throat> if I may defend myself, there's four empty cold brew containers over there. <laughs> there's no need to exaggerate. If the number's all already out of pocket, you shouldn't have to add one just to exaggerate. I'm just saying, I just, I just wish we could be honest about the situation. It's not a desk audit. It's over on the fucking wet bar, bro. Hold. What's a wet bar? It's a fucking fridge with a sink close to it. Yeah. 
let go. Hold. Ah, yes, the sinky fridge. <laughs> I just found out Americans call the sinky fridge a fucking wet bar. Can you believe this? Just found out Americans call a flicky flicky point and wiki a fucking light switch. Oh, the, the wheel is turning. It's geese, bruv, pronouns all over again. Who the fuck you call his son? I'll go by geese, bruv, pronouns now. So sorry, mate. Sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. It's all right. Just don't do it again or I'll fucking smash you. I just learned Americans call an inbred puppy a 2x pimpy. All right, all right. You're cooking us for that one. You are cooking us for that one. I just learned Americans call a fucking dog a Mewtwo X Elsa. <laughs> the fucking Game Boy Mewtwo sound. Oh, man. Oh, man. I watched some of those videos. It's just YouTube poops for TikTok, right? Hmm, YouTube poops? Don't you mean non sequitorious sketch comedy? NL, would you describe yourself as an American Ameroophile? I'm in, I'm in a bad place here, guys. Never mind, we're chilling. Yeah, I I mean online, if you were com to compare me to the normal, or the I should say the average internet person, including Americans, I think I'm more pro America. It doesn't mean I'm defending every decision Ronald Reagan ever made, but I I do think this. America gets bad raps for things they deserve, but they also get a lot of collateral damage for stuff in America that actually owns. A huge surplus of cheap, delicious food is actually like a good thing. People deserve treats. You tell them. Also, there are aspects of American culture that I think people online kind of find cringe, but I actually think is, like, inspiring. Like, college football culture, there's a lot of negativity that goes alongside it. But it's kind of sick that just by, like, reading some books and going to a school, you can have, like, a community of friends numbering in the hundreds of thousands that gets together every Saturday to have fun. Also, as much as I hate <laughs> people who tweet about college sports, college sports is crazy, especially March Madness. Like, I don't even watch college basketball, but I think it's fucking sick that, like, future NBA players are getting, like, one in 30 of them is going to have their super team get cooked by, like, a dude who's going to be the chief marketing officer of a startup in, like, two years. Like, he's not even going to be, like, a dude who plays basketball. He's going to be, like, a wealth management consultant or something like that. But, like, for one day, he's unbeatable on the hard court, and he's a legend forever. Like, that's crazy. Hang on, we got to get a little lower. Stolen tweet. Excuse me, the tweet actually talks about uh, future accountants. 
I said CMO for a startup. It's a completely different joke premise. It's 2x pimpy. You ever see the video of the average American high school classroom versus the average American football team's locker room? Fuck that, dude. You ever see the video of uh, Louisiana State University's football team's locker room versus the Louisiana State Library? <laughs> the library had like tarps nail gun to the ceiling to catch leaking water. And the football changing room looked like some Star Trek shit that would send you down to another planet. Football makes the school more money, though. Guy standing up, uh, Norman Rockwell painting .jpg. I think schools should be predominantly concerned with education. Hammer emoji. Okay, okay. Let's kill him. Let's kill this guy with hammers. <laughs> we gotta up those numbers, library. <laughs> Can I say something that might get me in trouble? I've been seeing a lot of, like, librarians are heroes discourse online, and I simply have to ask you to explain it to me. I take my kid, I went to the library a lot when I was a kid. I take my kid to the library three times a month. They're doing work, don't get me wrong. They're putting the books out and like cool displays and stuff like that and leading story time. But like, heroes is like, uh, it's a strong word. Firefighters, yeah, 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 yeah. Paramedics, without a doubt. They're heroes in that their job is getting automated. Bro, no chat GPT is setting up a Easter themed scavenger hunt, okay? Robot can't understand the, the beauty of that. What about teachers? Some teachers are heroes, for sure. Some teachers are just kind of like, you know, doing their job, which is also totally fine. Yeah. Yeah. Which one were you? I was just doing my job. <laughs> Hold. Well, I think it's like the same thing as like going bald, right? Everyone's like, if I'm bald, if I was gonna go bald, I would just get jacked. They're like, if I was one of the teachers, I'd be one of the fucking, I'd be Robin Williams in Dead Poet Society. No, you probably would. You probably would just do your job. You'd probably just be like, you know, go to work, teach the class, and then fucking like go home and have a life because you're tired. You know. Oh. It is true. Libraries are cool because you can just like sit there for free, which is becoming increasingly rare. If you have a young kid, it's so easy to kill like two hours of the library. Get some books. They'll usually have like, you know, some coloring pages out there. They usually have like board games. One of the libraries I took my kid to recently had like a cool, like kind of almost a a programming game for toddlers, which was sick. You could program like a series of instructions symbolized by shapes and then like lay the shapes out in a line and a sensor would transmit the instructions to like a robot that moves around the grid. My kid was just like picking her nose and I was like, this is pretty cool. <laughs> 
This is fucking sick. You go to multiple libraries? Yeah, bro, why not? I probably go to, to the library more than 98% of chat, without a doubt. There's probably 2% library freaks. I just can't compete with you. I see some of you, you're in there all day. That's fine, I understand. I'm not just going up to the library and then spending six hours on chess.com. But yeah, I'll go to the local library and then sometimes I'll take my kid to a class in a different neighborhood. And then the class is like an hour long and I'm like, well, I haven't really given mommy enough free time. Let's go to the library for a couple hours. You ever go by yourself? No. No, no, that's not going to happen. Although every time I'm in the library, I do look at the fucking... Uh, the posters. I'm like, I wonder if there's some interesting classes coming up. And then, like, without fail, every single one is like, how to use Gmail for seniors. And I'm like, ah, I'm sorry, I'm not driving downtown for that. Maybe I'll watch it when they put it on the, on the YouTube channel. Oh. How's the people watching? Um, certainly one of the worst places to people watch because nobody's talking. I would not recommend going to the library to people watch. Best place to people watch? I don't know. I fucking I'm normalized letting people live their lives. I don't have an answer for you ever since Pub 340 on Camby and Gastown closed. That was a great place for people watching. Went there one time and watched a dude download like 500 photos of swimsuit illustrated models in bikinis and then copy paste them one by one and put them into a Word document. <laughs> I was like, what is? What is homeboy doing, bro? What's he gonna do with this Doc X, man? Also, why the fuck are you using Microsoft Word for that shit? You gotta use latex or something. Your image wrapping is gonna be all fucked up, bro. What about Robinson Street? Um, parts of it, yeah. I really like Robinson Street, like, uh, closer to Stanley Park. Amazing food down in the West End. That's all I gotta say about that. Okay, hold. Hold. So this is what the homie from Built to Spill has been up to. <laughs> I think they're still making music, asshole. I don't know if they're making, if they got new Randy Describes Eternities in them, but still. I think they're still cooking something up. They're probably on tour or something. Two p.m. This is right. It's a little heave ho. Hold. That didn't feel right. Just something about it didn't feel right. Brother, I think I gotta I think I gotta stick to the swing, honestly. I think this like don't swing, just jump thing is uh I'm not saying it couldn't work. It just feels like it's it's harshed my vibe a little bit. Yeah. 
Did you know if you wear the stone thunder plate ring, you actually get plus 2% aerial hang time, which allows you to make that jump more reliably? That's what, that's, that's what it would be like in a real game. In a real game, you could walk to a digital store and buy a magic bullet that would solve all your problems. <clears throat> Do North Americans get ice cream vans going around where you live around 7 p.m.? Yeah. Yeah. Not everywhere and certainly not year-round. But we have, we have ice cream trucks here. Hey, Anel, when you were in the Final Fantasy VII OG, who was your favorite party member besides Cloud Strife? Um, I was always Disc 1. I'm a Cloud Barrett Tifa sort of guy. Disc 2... It was always, it was Cloud and Barrett the whole time, and I'd usually rock like a Red 13 in there as well. But sometimes I would throw Sid in instead of Red 13. The problem for me with Yuffie and Vincent is that like by the time you get them in the game, it's like I'd already cemented my enjoyment of the playstyles of the other characters. So I'm like, I don't want to go through the trouble of figuring out how to use Yuffie properly when I when Barrett now has a fucking huge cannonball attached to his hand and could just go tung, tung, tung. I appreciated Vincent's energy. He's he's edgy for sure. I mean, he has good reason to be edgy, don't get me wrong. Vincent is a mod on r slash cuckold psychology. Come on now, don't do him dirty like that, man. Don't do Lucretia dirty like that, okay? She didn't ask for that. That was pretty close, bro. Hey, NL, you will get more viewers playing a different game. I'm just looking out for you. Faint Bunny, you're getting a little close to the edge now, okay? Just so you know. I know this has been a problem for you historically. <laughs> just letting you know. Oh. Next time, next time. Why'd you ban, why'd you unban that obvious troll? They're okay, they just want some attention. They're very much not okay. Well, they're fucked up in like a way that's not like that malevolent, at least. The thing that I love is when someone trolls and then like all the people who troll are like, why did you unban that troll? Were well, you jealous? Cause like they outgamed you. They got more attention. Like I see some of the shit that you post and now you're gonna be uppity about like, why are you giving Faint Bunny so much attention? You got beaten at your own game, okay? As a true Canadian, have you listened to your daily Tragically Hip yet? No, uh, there was no Tragically Hip on the Peloton ride this morning. There was uh, one Rush song, Free Will by Rush did come on. I'm trying to think if there was any other Canadian classics. I think it was a Japan droids list ride. Um, I think it was a sloan list ride. Might have been very, very low on, uh, on the Canadian coefficient today. Wolf Parade? Okay, actually, there was a Wolf Parade song. 
You got me on that one. Hold, 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 hold. Which Japan, Japan Droids album is better? It's tough, okay? It's hard to compete with the, the raw debut of Post Nothing. I do think that they benefited from a little bit more polish on... Um, I can't remember the name of the second one. Celebration Rock. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think... Don't get me wrong. Post Nothing's got some incredible songs. Young Hearts Spark Fire, Sovereignty, Heart Sweats. The boys are leaving town, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I feel like, I, I simply put, I feel like the house that heaven built is probably the best song they've ever done. Oh. Okay, give him one more. What is it? Eleven fifty-nine. We got one more. Their early work was a little too new wave for me. So true. YouTube thought the girders are bad, just wait. I mean, this is better than the girders for sure. At least when you, you fall, you just fall. And you don't have to hear... This is pleasant, man. Because you'd try to build momentum for minutes? Yeah, because I'd be fucking starting to build momentum and then somebody would ask me, like, you know, how do you feel about Tim Hortons or something like that? How do you feel about Tim Hortons? I don't like it. <laughs> it's fucking ass. How do you feel about Galen Weston? I don't like him. Give me my bread money back, you motherfucker. <laughs> so it's fucking true, though. Do you hate them for their pro-Canada stance or their terrible coffee? I, I hate every aspect of it, quite frankly. The food and coffee are not good. All of their ads are basically like, they, uh, you are not a real Canadian unless you eat here, despite the fact that they're owned by like a Brazilian international restaurant brand, like, Hold. But like, I, I could forgive like a lot of stuff, but the food and the coffee are just so ass that like everything else now is, it, it pales in compare or it, it comes into focus as a result of that. Hey, Anel, my coworkers are all your age or older, and they all have small children that they talk about all the time. Please help me. You don't need help. You just need to be a human being. Yeah. Yeah. Hold. <laughs> Maybe one more. One more real quick. One more. Just tell them you're not interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go into a group of six of your coworkers and tell them, actually, you're not interested in what they're talking about. Let me know how that works out for your career. 
But the reality of the situation is that um, being a grown up and existing in society means sometimes you don't get to talk about what you want to talk about 100% of the time. Sometimes you have to talk about what other people want to talk about before you can talk about what you want to talk about. I don't know what you want me to say. What about the reverse? What's the reverse? People with kids only want to talk about their kids? Okay, motherfucker, what do you want to talk about? End of Evangelion? Like, people spend all day with their fucking kids. They're at w they wake up, take care of their kid, send their kid to school, go to work, come home, pick up their kid from school, spend all night with their kid, go to sleep, do it all again for fucking 40 years. What do you want them to talk about? There's nothing else going on, bro. They're talking about what they're interested in. What do you want them to do? <laughs> Literally have a single hobby? What's your hobby, motherfucker? Why don't you talk more then? Seems like your hobby's getting pissed off at normal people just doing their best. Hold. <clears throat> me when the person who is only talking to me because they're contractually obligated to be nice to me talks about what they did on their weekend, but what they did on their weekend isn't that interesting to me. Hurr, hurr. I'm mad at you. Me when I'm fucking, I, I tell a story about my child who is the most important thing to me in the world and then the, my coworker says, yo, that's crazy. Did you see this Dragon's Dogma news? It's getting review bombed on Steam because you have to pay two bucks to change what your character looks like. <laughs> yes! All right, all right, let's play some Balatro. A difficult game about climbing. <laughs> 